Welcome back once again to the Hogcast. Join the FTCR crew as they cover the latest in Sonic the Hedgehog happenings. You thought it was over, and so did we. But now it's back. Hogcast episode 8. You lied to me. You said it was. this was it. I was trying to you Brian it. You told me this podcast couldn't hurt me anymore, Chris. You said, you said the danger was over. I gotta say a lot of things for you guys to hang out with me. <laughs> What's up? The last episode was like April. Now it's... Not April anymore? Jeez, it's September. It's oh, God, was, it, was it April? Do you guys remember when Sonic the Hedgehog happened? I don't. <laughs> do so bye. People, see you next time. Remember, fuck you, fuck you Sega. People, you said people, spring. Remember when people cared about Sonic the Hedgehog? No. Well, he was never good. <laughs> then a good game came out we're going to figure that out in two years. So, um, actually, Forces comes out November 7th? Apparently, although, two months. Apparently, in some Amazon things are showing that it's supposed to be shipping the end of this month. Although, I'm sure that's an Amazon mistake. Yeah. yeah. You like how I made that topical with that release date mentioned, though? Because we, <laughs> we talk about news on the show. You guys remember that? Sega will be like, I know you guys were mad that we didn't release Sonic Mania. <laughs> <laughs> no, we won't. Uh, until until like another season later, but so we're gonna give it to you gonna, a month early. We're gonna move up the release date for the game no one cares about, and even the, a game that would that um would actually warrant additional time. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll be, you know I'm sure I'm sure we'll get to it, but maybe you could use it a bit more. But, hmm. I said it. If I can say it, Chris. Come at me. Bro. All right, let's get to let's get to news. Bring <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> so the news is Sonic Mania happened and Sonic Forces is going to happen. The um, end. So you have six months. I, is I, that I a feel threat, like Chris. <laughs> it's it's gonna fucking happen. You're gonna fucking like it. It's a thinly veiled threat from Sega. <laughs> um, like I scrolled through some news, but honestly, it's been so many months. Like there's no point in running back to be I like, th- well, I- oh, Sonic Boom season two episode thirty seven's ratings. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I, know, I just want to say a bit of bit of uh, FTCR house oh, yes. just because we haven't. I know um, by the time that this comes out, I think it'll be halfway through uh, September. I know before Platform Mania, we said we were going to take a uh, short uh, two-week time off. Um, well, we're FTCR. FTCR, you should, you should have expected more. Our, our new plan is to uh, start in October 1st to be back with all new LPs. Um, uh, so expect o- November. O- All-Stars Gaming and, yes, the panels. We gotta. That's our plan to come back strong. <laughs> so, oh, wait, we, we did a panel this year. Yeah, I mean, there's a few panels. I mean, we still got a panel from last year. I need to upload. Um, yeah, and we're about to have the I'm same about, panel. I'm about to do the third one like, for that. But yeah, so our, our, new, our new plan is um, October 1st. We're going to come back strong, and we already have um, plans for the rest of the uh, year. Viva la FTCR. Amen. <laughs> yeah, so that's that's the only Praise housekeeping. The that's the only housekeeping I can think of. All right, so uh, we're going to start with the news. Remember when we did the news? Um, biggest headline, this comes by way of TSSC News. Chow will not be featured in Sonic Forces, and that's why I just canceled my pre-order. Thank Same. God. The reason I canceled my pre-order was because of that terrible uh, controller skin. <laughs> Gareth, Gareth pre-ordered oh, the right. game because there's no Chow in <laughs> I did, but then I cancelled it because they gave you that free crappy controller skin. Oh, goodbye water. Goodbye bottle of water. Um, there is one thing I think you wanted to mention. Uh, the Sonic movie being delayed till 2019. That happened in our very long hiatus. <sighs> yes. I'm cancelling my pre-order um, to the Sonic movie. <laughs> Oh, I have the tickets from Eventbrite. Fuck you, I Sega. You said 2018. Well, you just 2016, four years ago. It's been a while. Fuck you, Sega. You said 2016. Yeah, so obviously this is old news. Hot take. Expect this to get delayed another two years and then never talked about again. Oh my god. Yeah, just well, my uh, hot take I th- well, see, there's, there's, with all these video game movies turning out like this. Also, it's just the thing that, you know, I, I, um, I when it was announced that Tim Miller, director of Deadpool, was going to be brought in to be a producer. I was like, oh, you know, that's, that's to me, I actually thought that is a very good sign because, again, you know, he knows what he's doing. He's worked with the franchise. In the past, as we said before, he owned Blur Studios with did, with did cut scenes for games like Shadow and 06. He has proven to be able to get a movie done. Yes. Um, a, a movie which a lot of people didn't have a lot of faith in um, in terms of the studio. That's why it was delayed for so long. But I guess now yeah. Tim Miller is tasked with directing a new Terminator movie. So Tim much, Miller? Tim, so yeah, Tim Miller. So I'm not sure if that's going to interfere with his work in in the Sonic movie at all, or what? Because he's just producer, so I'm not sure. 
like what's going on with that. But yeah, I, I feel I, like they're not even sure what's going on with that. I, I I would not be surprised if the movie is just flat out um, cancelled at some point, or, or just very quietly swept under the rug, and then in about a year's time, during one of the um, Sega streams. They'll just be like, oh yeah, it's cancelled. Okay, so, uh, Sonic meme, let's go. We'll have a live-action remake of the Sonic OVA. <laughs> like, <laughs> fucking, did, I, I would rather that, because at least I know I would enjoy that to a certain degree, and then and then we'll get sexy live-action Sarah cosplay. I mean, technically, that is a live-action CGI mix. That is what they're saying for the movie could be. Um, it's Yeah, it's interesting to me that even the Uncharted movie is still getting mentioned and thrown around. Like, now it's a prequel to that series... I'm amazed that's still living, so I guess anything can fucking happen, but... Isn't, isn't current Spider-Man from Holland in talks today? Playing young Nathan Drake. Yeah, young Nathan Drake, which... I, that's a good fit, I guess, but... I don't know. TJ's favorite Spider-Man. <laughs> I don't Smoked know. him. I just... I have no faith in the movie even, like, coming to fruition, let alone faith in the movie as a product, so... Well, I don't... In fact, the Sony's behind it. I don't... Nope. The fact that... They, yeah, that's not a good sign, either. They clearly want to make it like Smurfs, and it, you know... No. What? You know the Smurfs? Not the new CG one. Because that would be a smarter direction. Uh, I'm guessing that uh, all CG Smurfs bombed because it was all CG, which is what they should have done with it, so no one liked it. Um, I think... I, I, yeah, I mean, I think the come and go in cinema is pretty quick. Yeah, I didn't really keep an eye on it. Yeah, because I remember I was watching Moana in theaters, and there's a trailer for that, and I was like, oh, wow, they actually did a... That was like a fucking they Smurfs actually, movie. They actually look like the Smurfs now. Yeah, and there's no, like... Justin Timberlake running around. He was in those, right? No, Neil Patrick Harris. Same person. Which you could you could They're tell like he did not give a fuck in that movie. Yeah. He could not give less of a shit about anything in that movie. Was when Jason Lee was in the Chipmunks and like you know, you David know, Cross. Like, what are they even doing? You know what's weird though about uh, Jason Lee? In the fourth Chipmunk movie, he actually gives a performance. Like oh, he right. waited to, most most actors go in the reverse, they'll try in the first one and then by like the fourth movie they just don't give a fuck. You think he just kinda of got he, stock home? It's like these are just gonna keep happening, so I may as well flex think, my artistic muscles. I think somewhere. at that point he was like, you know, my, my name is always cancelled, I don't do Kevin Smith right. movies anymore. This is what I have, I better actually try to show people I can still act. <laughs> so that's um the Sonic movie. Did you have anything more you want to say about that or you just wanna make sure it got brought Did, up? But make sure it got brought up. Just so we get shit I'm on I'm a sure little bit. I'm sure Sega will, you know, I'm sure this will never actually come out, so don't worry about it. Okay. Um, if you check uh, the other FTCR podcast, Sonic Says, which you should check out, which is comic focused, hey. you've heard all the uh, hot takes about uh, <laughs> IDW and Archie going to the fucking cemetery. <laughs> uh, this has happened since then. They were going to get the first details for the IDW. Sonic Comic October 8th at New York's Comic Con. New, New York City Comic Con, yeah. Yeah, which I, I feel like that's usually when a lot of Sonic things would happen well, normally yeah, with Archie, uh, so. Yeah, well, because Archie, Archie are normally in. Um, you think uh, that'll I, be I, like. I, in New York, normally we get some kind of like Sonic panel. Yeah, at you New think York that'll be like seeing your, like your ex awkwardly at the party. It's like, hey. Well, no, you're with them now? Oh. No, because in, in terms of. In terms of well, it's. Not really, because I, I, you know, going from Archie to IDW in terms of Sonic, in terms of comic publishers, is like upgrading several several steps. Yeah. Because I mean, like, like IDW isn't the biggest company in the world, but compared to Archie, they're like fucking mm. like megastars. True. I'm hoping we. Um, I guess there's no details on what details you're gonna get. I I'm going to assume because me and Jonathan talk about this a lot. We're we're going to assume we're gonna get like a launch date. Like, you know, like, when, when the first issue will come out. Initial creative team. And initial, and, you know, some, some promotional artwork and who the writer and um, like main artists are going to be. Because we, we assume they're going to start with just one book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's very safe to assume, yeah. yeah. Um, although IDW I'd be are, shocked if they IDW had are known for their, like, miniseries and extra books. You know, it, took tur- it took their current run on Turtles, like, five years before they started an extra Turtle book. That, that was, that tied into that continuity. Hmm. But I guess now there's three turtle books, which kind of like Sonic. One is based on the cartoon. Okay. So it lasted a few issues and was really good, and then died. Oh uh, well, not. It lasted a few issues. Uh, well, got really bad, and, and then oh. they keep rebooting it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um. I think I just want to hear about the creative team. I don't even need to see like an image or anything. Like, as long as I know the right people are working on the actual book itself, I'm fine. But yeah. if they come in, it's like a bunch of people we don't know or aren't familiar with. Then I'm going to be a little worried, and I'll probably want to see more. I'll, I keep but, saying like if um, what what's going to help me like buy it issue to issue is Ian and Tracy, which hmm. at, at this point, just based on 
certain things Tracy Yardley has said on some of his public forums, unless he's just being coy, it sounds like he has not even been uh, talked to at all from anyone um, hmm. from IDW. With uh, how much um, the Sonic Twitter like loves Tyson Hess and never mentions any other Sonic Karmic artist, um, is Tyson really busy, or do you think maybe they tapped him? He is currently a storyboard cartoon? artist at Nickelodeon hmm. for the Invader Zim movie. So he's um, probably not rocking a month to So, month like, Sonic what you're book. saying is there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> there's always a chance, my friend. Um, yeah, I mean, but, like, Tra- Tracy is, is, like, the artist, you know, yeah. like, for so long. So, I mean, if if anyone, you know, I, I would love if anyone from Archie came back. You know, like, yeah. uh, Jen Fernandez, uh, Diana Skelly, Tyson Hess, but because it's, like, Tracy, Tracy and Ian are the two. So that's why, like, if, if those two came back, uh, like, day one, day one, month-to-month purchase for me. Do you see a scenario where maybe the first few arcs are one artist, and then eventually they kind of rotate and bring in older artists and do that kind of thing? That tends to happen. Kind of like the that, old days? That tends to happen a lot with IDW. Like, I'm trying to think of some of their big flagship books, like, just off the top of my head, things like Turtles and Gem had one artist for, like, the first three or so arcs, mm-hmm. and then they'd start... Um, because I think artists more so than writers tend to want to jump around a bit more mm-hmm. and that type of stuff. But um, again, I, Ian keeps doing his his hashtag no and smiles on Twitter because I think he loves that. I, I think both Sega <laughs> and IDW have to know how much of an influence he is. I I would be shocked if he's not, like I think if, if we're gonna get one, it's going to be Ian. Yeah, because um, it's like. After doing so much to the Archie continuity and like rebooting and all the stuff, like being an Archie Sonic fan has to suck. We'll put it that way. To come back in and have like a completely new, like even writer, I'm not sure what incentive there is for existing fans to want to migrate at that point because they're not even getting what they like at that point. Yeah, like maybe they'll like it, but they don't know that. I mean, yeah, and also I think the fact that um, it's it's heavily implied based on all the legal issues and. Things other people have said in regards to contracts um, for these characters that it's almost certain this is going to be a page one reboot without any freedom fighters because I think you know I think people have said in, in the past things like Sega of Japan not a big fan of those characters and it's only because the original Archie contracts included the cartoon characters that they they were mm. when they rebooted it the last time they were allowed to stay so I'll be very shocked if like Antoine and Bunny. I'm, so, I'm sorry, Jonathan, but it's very unlikely that's one of money. <laughs> We've also seen around. a lot of efforts by Sega to, like, focus the, like, visual spectrum of the Sonic brand, in a sense. So I'd imagine this would be largely, like, a lot of Green Hill-looking stuff, at least at the beginning. I think it's probably going to be pretty, uh, I don't want to say sterile, but it's probably not going to do a lot of, like, crazy new things, I would imagine. At least not right off the bat. If you know what I'm getting at, like I it's probably going to be so. really safe. I think is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, you know, I mean, um, like another. Um, what was the Genesis thing? Where is it going through the old games again? Genesis. Genesis. <laughs> no, no, uh, the the new one I did, but I guess that too. Genesis of a hero. Yeah, mm. it's that kind of stuff, and like make it more game focused and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I mean, I, I think one thing that you hear certain people uh, um, guess about is that I'm not just the way. Because I guess at this point there'll be brand new contracts written and Sega will have more control. Um, some people are going to try and guess in that um, just based on how Sega are being with their brand now, they'll try and curtail so much outside stuff. Because mm-hmm. obviously, you know, we don't want... Even though if, if they had brought back Ian, this wouldn't happen, but we don't want another Penders where there's so much outside law brought in that someone's going to be like, I own these characters now, you know, Sega. Yeah, they don't want those lines to blur at all, I would And imagine. again, we've said it before, but as soon as it was announced IDW... Pinder's already started bringing, you know, talking about lawsuits of IDW over um, Star Trek comics. You <laughs> right. know, I was like, Jesus fucking Christ, you damn it. The Sonic comic will never be safe, no matter where, how far it runs. It won't. Uh, Ken no, Pender's no, grasp is too strong. No matter where it goes, his ego will still <laughs> penetrate, you know, anywhere. But I I'm just imagining the Sonic 2 box art, but with Pender's instead, like, crushing. <laughs> I think in terms of the book... The yeah, Sega 2 US box art. <laughs> yeah, I think in terms of the book, that's that's I haven't got any other news. Now, we, again, we will, I'm sure once that happens, we'll do a says specifically about that. But, um, yeah, I think I'm good for that. Um, in terms of other news, like the, the boom cartoon's still going on. 
Oh, yeah. Uh, Ian Flynn and, and um, Emmett Stanley had their episodes there. They were some of the best ones. Um, the Sonic series got too political. It got, it got, it got, Knuckles mansplained. Knuckles Like, man- this is what I want from Sonic, right? Knuckles became woke and fucking mansplained Amy into a new dimension. <laughs> um... What was his last line in that scene? It's like, I'm just a stupid one, though, or something. Right? It, was like, it was like, I may be a meathead, but that doesn't right. I'm not a feminist. Like, that, that's kind of too on the nose, like, you know, but apparently if, apparently if you disagree with any of the writers, you're a troll, so. That's us. I guess, I guess, we, guess we're trolls. I don't know how to feel about any of that, honestly. Like, we were talking about it a little bit earlier, and I still just don't know how I feel about it. I, I think of Sonic Boom as, like, the funny Sonic cartoon, not the, like, Place the, I'm tuning the, in to like guide children or not the get woke set section, a political compass. Know? Yeah, like whether I agree or disagree with what's going on, it's just weird to me. Yeah, especially when the and target not, audience won't understand what the fuck it means anyway. Yeah, and I'm not trying to say like, you can't make a political statement or anything. I know this is touchy, so you got to like clarify every like thought you make. But I don't know. It's just weird. That <laughs> oh. I'm referring to a game that's being played in the background here. We won't mention, but that happened to me once, and then this just happens until you time out. Um, anyone who knows my Twitter well, hint for an upcoming LP, I guess. Oh, hey, there you go. Oh, my, mine that. lasted the whole 60 seconds. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, uh, Subtle Transition has nothing to do with what we were just talking about. Sonic Mania's out. Hmm. That's a game that happened. Yeah. We're all pretty uh, excited about that. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> it's been that. out for like a, a, almost a month at this point, you know. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it's been out for a month on consoles. <laughs> Great PC users. Yeah, so now we're at the point where we. Oh yeah, that's it. that's a thing that we didn't. Uh, so yeah, at the last minute, um, like literally <laughs> the last minute, Sega was like, "Oh hey, uh, Sonic Mania is not coming out for PC on." Let's swap whatever. that back. Okay. The week before release, um, the social media. I'm not sure if it was Aaron or the Sonic account said, "Join us this Saturday or something <laughs> for." Uh, yeah, a special stream concerning Sonic Mania. And, like, naturally, you think, why would they have a stream unless something cool is going to happen, right? Like, maybe there's a surprise, or they're going to announce, like, DLC or something. Like, we're almost to the game's launch. Why would they have a stream if it wasn't something cool, right? Right. Like, that's what you think when a company announces a stream. Yep. So, like, everyone tunes in. I think I was driving here that day, or I was, like, waking up or something, because that was the Banjo stream day, right? Oh, I guess it was Friday. Well, it might have been, yeah, yeah. It was Friday or Saturday. So, like... I get here and I'm, yeah. I peek up my phone while I'm driving. And I'm seeing this shit pop up on my phone. I'm like, you better fucking not have announced the stream to delay Sonic Mania PC two weeks, and they did. And they added DRM with that delay by most accounts. I think, but it's fine because they gave everyone a free copy of Sonic One, a game that yep to it, make up for. And it. if you redeemed it, you cannot refund that game if you don't like DRM or Denufo. <laughs> so fuck Which, you. My my thing, and this is something we've brought up in the past. The Sonic social media team need to stop hyping up the most banal shit because it just leads people to get annoyed when you, you, you know you big up we're gonna have a big stream about mania where they could have literally just released a fucking tweet you know with, you a tweet know, with like an image of text and just like which, a which, sincerely which, written letter like hey here's what's up after the stream that's what they did just fucking do that to begin with don't waste everyone's time building up to a stupid stream to say something that you could have you know explained in a minute yeah, and then with the image, you don't even have to have your face attached because they were you know, apologizing and stuff on stream. Like, you don't even have to deal with that. Just put the image out. Yep. You don't even have to have a connection to a person that, that way. It's just like, oh, the company put out a statement. That sucks. Let's bitch out a tweet, and that's it. I don't know. That just all rubbed me the wrong way. The DRM yep. rubbed was, me the wrong way because the Steam page didn't advertise that, and they claimed it was for optimization. And granted, PC version has some bu- um, changes I like. Um uh, I'm not sure if that console patch will be out by the time we release this, but say the Studiopolis Act 1 boss controls way better on a PC version. So, like, hey, there's some stuff. Oh, which is, I think, something we, we should say, you know, um, from what was from what was I was told by Johnny when I was doing the Brain Scratch LP. Well, he was yes, told, I am. Was it? Um, mainly, they're supposed to have a day one patch for consoles. That, for whatever reason, just wasn't didn't come out. And I guess the all of the patches that are going to come in the console version were released on the Steam version day one. I didn't check it day one because I caved and bought the PS4 version. Yeah, look at me shitting on this company while giving them all my money. But yeah, like, um, one of the devs in some Discord, I think it was maybe the Sonic Fan Game HQ Discord or something, said, like, yeah, there's going to be a day one patch, you know, just so you know, or something. This casually kind of mentioned it in one of the public rooms, right? So, like, over at Retro, we closed the 
bug reporting thread because they're like, hey, like they know there's going to be a patch. Let's wait for them. And it never happened. <laughs> so like even us over there, we were confused about it. But yeah, like I've noticed, like I haven't had the music cut out on me. That Studiopolis boss works better. Like there's a few little minor things I'm forgetting that work better. So like uh, it's going to be a worthwhile they patch. The, um, Supersonic on a separate button, button yeah. which is huge. Um, I'm surprised that wasn't in the base game. Isn't Sonic the, 4 the best game ever made? Sonic 4 had it. Didn't the mobile ports do that? Uh, well, yeah, they did not. I think, so. I, I think the mobile... I haven't played them because I hate the mobile games that they <laughs> play, but I believe, yes, I believe they do. Yeah. So, I don't know. Like, the PC version, like, I, it honestly all just kind of tainted the release a little bit. What other... Otherwise, should have been, like, a fucking home run victory lap for a second. Like, we released a fucking good Sonic game everyone likes, you know, like, victory lap. It's like, oh, yeah, and we did all this <laughs> the bullshit. Like that is after it's released... They released like a um, online only trailer, it's like twenty seconds, and it just um, has certain clips. Oh, like, the, certain, the accolades like, trailer. Yes, and one of the accolades is the best Sonic game in I don't know how long. So they they released a trailer where they just flat out admit that Sonic's been shit for years. <laughs> like nice, who whoever, uh. select, whoever selected that review needs to be fired because that's a really bad thing for your brand as a whole to put in your trailer. I got some bad news. It was me, and that's why I'm unemployed. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. But no, um, we like the game a lot. Yeah. I think um, safe to say it's the best Sonic game since like 2011. Not that there's a lot of competition to that. What came out in 2011? Um, uh, oh, that's of, right. Rise of Lyric. Watch your, watch your fucking check your privilege. That's right. I'm sorry. Uh, no good Sonic games have actually been released in Sonic 3 and Knuckles TJ, so good point. <laughs> I forgot about that. Um, <laughs> no, no, don't, don't, don't say that because as, as Donnie said in his review, Sonic 3 and K was never good. Did All right, Don- nerd. Do I have to unfollow Don? Okay. <laughs> Fuck you, Donnie. Clickbait, motherfucker. <laughs> I said it. Anyway, if you like this video... Um, <laughs> check out like, our like, like, comment, subscribe, check out our Patreon, donate to our... Uh, check out our... Help uh, me live. Check out our... <laughs> help me live. Check out our pup named Scooby-Doo live commentaries. <laughs> <laughs> talking, I think, I think talking Red, pup named Scooby-Doo. I think Red Herring might have did it this time, guys. <laughs> Don't quote me on that one, but... No, but... Yeah, Manius... Why put name Scooby-Doo? Because someone's gotta. And it's gotta be us. Come on, Scoob. I already got the... Pe- oh, you're underage. What are we... <laughs> When are we starting a pup named Scooby Doo cast? Like, I don't Next think, week. I don't think we've ever mentioned pup named Scooby Doo on MTCR before. Hogcast brings you the firsts, all right? I, th- I think NBA might have mentioned it once. <laughs> I can see NBA mentioning it. Yeah. I think NBA mentioned Red Heaven once, but yeah, like Red Heaven. What a fucking random thing to bring up. Hey, uh, look, but I'm man. so glad he did. <laughs> I just work here, all right? I think that's my favorite thing Chris has ever done. <laughs> God, I set this bar so fucking was, low was for you, apparently. Introduce the concept of an FDCR podcast <laughs> centered around a pup <laughs> named Scooby-Doo. You know it'd be good. I'm not you disagreeing. Know it. <laughs> I'm not disagreeing. Good. But yeah, Sonic Mania. Um, how do you guys feel about it? Yeah, we're about... Who wants to go first? No one. You know, we're a couple weeks after release, so I think we're kind of out of the honeymoon phase, right? Yeah. You know, we're not, like, drooling over that incredible Eggman animation, Studiopolis Act 2. God, it's so good. <laughs> I, will, I will say, um, you know, I think what I'll just repeat what I said on the, on the Brain Scratch thing. Um, very, very, very good game. I think this game is a lot of fun, but um, it, it, it's, it's not a perfect game. I, I would rate this, like, an eight, eight and a half. I think that's good. Um, I, I think it's it's it doesn't have its own identity. I think it tries... Too much to mimic um, three and K, almost to a, a detriment. Um, there's a lot of things I th- I feel it's 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 missing a lot of things it does just for the sake of nostalgia. Um, but uh, I would I greatly look forward to the prospect of a 100% original Mania two. Mm-hmm. I think something like that where they could fix some of the problems because I think. Um, well, you know, the game's been that long enough where I don't think the levels themselves are a spoiler, but I think Metallic Madness is one of... I was I hate playing that level. I, I, I would actually probably rate this game a whole half point higher if Metallic Madness wasn't included. Because I thought that level was so fucking annoying to play. It, really? It, I, yeah, I, I can't fucking stand that level. I mean, it's, it's better than it is in CD, but that ain't really say much because yeah, I, I hate the CD level design. But yeah, I really fucking hated Metallic Madness. I enjoyed it, but it's a bummer to me that that level is near the end of the game because the ride to the end of the game is so great. And then you get to that level and it's kind of a bummer. It's just not as fun, I think. And it's 
the shame. And I think a lot of it actually comes down to like really CD ish stuff of like stuff randomly getting in your way, weird enemy placement. I'm like, what? what like, why are we even going back to Little Planet? Like, is, hey man, is, the fans on Ruby, all right? Is 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 Titanic Monarch on the Little Planet? Like, it's just, what? The, There's a lot of story stuff like that in Mania. I don't really understand, and like maybe it's in the digital manual. I have not which found is bullshit online because three and three and K shows all that on screen. Like that's that's that, that's the thing. That's one of the things I was expected more like you know, them to actually to kind of tell a more detailed story online just using online in game <laughs> just using um more sprites and shit but like there's not really a lot of anything it's the opening sets you up to think that because the, well, the there's a lot of great stuff in the opening well, no, the opening sets you up to think that you're just playing a free and k fan hack. well that too <laughs> but in terms of like animation and stuff and like you know, what's this thing? What's Stegman doing? What happened to the egg robots? Like the, it, it sets the, up something interesting. The, but. the final, the uh, end of level cutscene in Greeno Act Two has some of the most fluid like, Eggman, animation. Eggman sprites. Oh, yeah. that you can really feel the sixty frames in that stuff, and it, it's it's so good. Oh, I felt him <laughs> rippling through your soul. Wow, Gareth, would you say it's in your top ten Sonic games? I'll tell you, it's definitely my top eight Sonic games. All right, yeah. I was um, I was thinking, I'm going to ask TJ this. It's like, oh, right, right. I yeah, would, it is. You know what? Yeah, I would I would completely say it is definitely in, in my in my top ten. Um, I don't think it's better than 3 and K at all. I would still mm. rate 3 and K higher than this um, by, by at least a couple points or two. Um, by a country mile? By a country mile. Although okay, I, does, does something come between Sonic Mania and 3 and K? Sonic CD, it's, Gareth's favorite game. You know, if if, if we just rank it, because because I always kind of keep the three D and two D separate. If, yeah, if we're gonna if we're gonna put this towards the classics, I would this it's it's almost like a joint second with two. I put three and K, then this and two. Like I, I go back and forth where I think this or two many or two is better. Um, but this is certainly better than one and CD. Right, like right question. I would happily play this over either of those two. Hmm. This is the most fun I've ever had with a classic Sonic game. I'll say that. Maybe it's just because I didn't grow up with those, and this feels like maybe my 2D Sonic in a way. Okay. By a stretch, but... I can see that. I just found the level design a lot more fun for the most part. Not every zone is a winner, and not every act is a winner, but this is the most enthralled and like captivated I've ever been with a 2D Sonic game. Um, I appreciate the classics a lot, but they've never... like clicked that well I'm, mm-hmm. I'm not good at 2d games in general but something about mania just feels right to me i feel like the level design hits a really good balance between cd's verticality and three and k's goodness <laughs> to put it in a way i thought you were opening your mouth to prepare something so i lost my train of thought and i looked over and you're just <laughs> yawning same but yeah I, I really like mania i'd put it in my top 10 easily mm-hmm. um you know, my favorite classic game. Like, when I need that itch scratched, Mania is going to be my go to for years, I imagine. So, I'm very impressed with it. There are, I think each of us here probably has many incredibly microscopic nitpicks we could go on and on about. Yeah. And we probably will. But um, even with those in mind, I still think uh, this is a delight. Yeah, I think it's pretty great. Um... To quote Roger Ebert, two <laughs> thumbs way up. <laughs> Um, my complaints are... I have no I idea just, why I did that. I just want to, I just want to quote Red Letter Media now with Voyager Eber, but I won't. Where is that? That's no, not like we've never referenced them before. Well, Go no, for I'm it. Just, no, I'm just saying the, the quote I want to reference is... Uh, is not, not not good. Never mind. It's kind of fucked up. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, okay TJ, go for it. You know one girl <laughs> I, uh, I have enjoyed it, but I think I have the same complaints as Gareth, but for different Sheep. different reasons, I guess. Um, and I mean, it's, it's kind of the same complaint as everybody else where they're like, the original stuff's really good. And then the rehash stuff is good, but it still makes you wish that the rest of the game was all the original stuff. So sometimes, I mean, I, I think Chemical Plant Act 2 is one of the best zones in the game. One of the best yeah, levels in the game. That's, that, that's a really fucking good level. That's kind of my point though. I think if they got rid of, um... Because, because I think that, I think the the thing is with all these rehash levels is that Act One is kind of an amalgamation of, hey, remember this, remember this you layout, remember the water rising section. Yeah. I clap because I know that. <laughs> it's, it's just like like it's just an amalgamation of like like here's set pieces from these zones that you remember, and then the second act is usually something 
relatively entirely different with some like returning gimmicks. Um, and, uh, I think that if they took kind of like what Ian does, if they took the zones and like the ideas behind the zones, like the aesthetic and everything and made them different, like maybe like, you know, like if they would have done like chemical plant, but it's like run down and like in meltdown. Oh, it's haunt generations. Like that mm. could have been. That could have been. Well, yeah, they did. They did do that in Sonic Generations, but I mean, like, I get your point. Yeah, I also think that Generations does. I, I mean, like, I, I can understand people who prefer Mania, but in, in terms of a game that kind of does old levels, I think Mania actually. So I think Generations actually does it better. I mean, not just not just for the reason why that there's a actual story reason why you know these things are happening and the kind of level progression makes more sense. I, I just think that um, again, Mania, Mania. So in generations knows what it is. I think Mania does suffer from some from some slight level of identity crisis. I disagree because I feel like so I feel in the in the be in the early levels of generations where the two D sections are like the stuff that you know, and then the three D sections are. Uh, you know, interesting new takes on... You don't know what I know. You know my dad. <laughs> they're interesting new takes on, like, uh, they're 3D versions of the 2D stuff that you like um, with some, you know, neat twists and stuff at, at points. But then, like, the 2D reimaginings of the 3D levels are pretty lackluster in comparison. You don't remember the part in S- Speed Highway Classic where you rang the bell in the middle of a mall floating in the midair? Yeah, were you a nerd? You a nerd? I remember. I remember. That wasn't a striking moment for you. I remember breaking Speed Highway Classic. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I've never seen that before. You bastard! <laughs> no wonder you don't like that game. <laughs> Every time you touch it, it breaks. <laughs> Everything you break touches. I just oh, <laughs> That's deep, man. I just remember that that line of Gareth filming me playing Speed Highway. You fucking Classic. broke Speed Highway Classic. Classic. Me next, Christopher. Uh, he already said his. I went before TJ. Uh, I, I think the identity crisis thing is interesting because I know I mentioned this to you today and in the DM we have once, but it's weird. Like even the returning zones have returning zones in them. Yeah, like, yeah there's again, DNA in the DNA, and there's a point where it's cool, and there's a point where it's like, damn, Studiopolis is fucking awesome. Mirage Saloon Act Two is fucking awesome. Press Garden is interesting. Like I wish the whole thing was just shit like that. Like imagine if imagine if what's well, like, well, like again? All why does Oil Ocean have fucking Sanopolis or shit like that? I just don't. I mean, I, mean, I, I get you can understand that they're kind of like generations did it. Like you're you know encompassing more zones in one, but it's just like it just feels like they. I don't. I. I don't. For the life of me, I. I don't want to play at all that any of the members of the Mania team are lazy. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like it's a small team. It's a, it's a small team, and you know they clearly, they clearly, you know that they love this franchise more than most. They clearly have a, you know, a, uh, a, you know, uh, they 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 know what they're doing, and they're hard workers. But just for sometimes it just feels like where it's like certain gimmicks and sections are just kind of taken for baiting from other levels. I kind of would would have preferred them to try something original rather than just us seeing something we've seen before again. Would you cite an example as how Titanic Monarch Order really has the scrap brain zone? things with the pig bots and it's just literally that level design that parts stuff like that yeah i mean kind of again i, th- I think more i think more yeah so stuff like that stuff like again the um the the, the set pieces of you know the uh the kind of uh, sandopolis gimmick in oil ocean i would even also to a certain extent the fact that in metallic madness you you face the, the um, final zone boss i'm like what why is this here just, just like on on a kind of um on a kind of thematic level why is the final zone boss here Things like that. Yeah. I'm just like, oh, no, I never, okay. I never thought about that. So you mentioned it, but at least would have made more sense in Titanic Monarch being the final zone of the game to run through. Like, here's the old Sonic bosses before you fight the new final one. Yeah, I mean, also just the fact that why are we, you know, why is there a Sonic One boss in the Sonic CD level? Though, as I say that CD had fucking terrible bosses, so I can't you know, understand why taking a non CD boss, but still, it's just like you don't want the treadmill boss. That is the only good boss. <laughs> it, like, it, it's, it's not a good boss, but it's the most, it's the most inventive CD boss. I feel it's the most fun boss. Boss. Yeah, you don't want the pinball boss or the 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 one that goes to foreground. The, you don't want. To spin I don't even remember the bosses. I will say that I will say though, aside from a small moment in Studiopolis, one thing I do I do give them credit for: no casino level, no casino yeah. gimmicks. 
You know, there's like a, f- a few small things here and there, but no no major, like, this is the casino level. So I do give them props for that. Studio has felt like the right way to do a casino level nowadays to me. Because, like, if you do a, a standard Sonic Casino level, you're just doing what all the other Sonic Casino yeah. levels have already done anyway. Well, I mean, like, it's like that. And then, like, um, Mirage Saloon, at least Knuckles level, has a lot of, like, the, the like, flippers and, like, the bouncies. The, the, um, From, like, like Collision Chaos. Yeah, yeah. And, and, like, Casino Light and stuff, yeah. So, I mean, like, they'll think, think that, like, small things here and there, like, you know, just, just using bumpers obviously isn't ripping off a gimmick. But, again, when you just take the kind of gimmick of a level, like, it's on top of Attack 2, it's kind of just like, eh. Mm-hmm. And, like, I... I I think they at least made it make sense thematically. Like, oh, well, I, I guess if you think about it, pulling a lever to clear fire smog doesn't actually make any sense. No, it makes, it makes But no by sonic sense. logic, you can at least stretch it to be like, this kind of makes sense here for this to happen in this production factory of like smog and flame. But yeah. That's, a, that's and as a, Gareth Tom, you can actually die from that. I just thought it was for visual effects. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, one big thing that and Gareth kind of alluded to this when he was. Uh, talking about it, so you get you get level transitions uh, somewhat yeah. halfway through the game, they and just, then halfway uh, th- stop. No, well they don't stop halfway through the game, but they they do stop for a while, and then um, because I mean you get it in Oil Ocean, or not from oil, from a uh, Mirage Saloon to Oil Ocean, and then I think it, I think they stop off the oil. I think that's the last one. Maybe. I think it is the last one. You're right, but I mean like like what. Going back to like what I was saying about like taking the aesthetic and like reinventing the level instead of like rehashing it, like why why not make the flying battery like crash into something? Yeah, I mean, and, like I, have that be the level transition. I I wouldn't be surprised if if and again I, I have no idea, but I wouldn't be surprised if say somewhat along production the level design like the level order changed, mm-hmm. and so like maybe they had. They had these things planned, and then at the last minute, they had to, you know, change it around. Although, to be fair, um, Three and Knuckles did that, but they still may corrected mm-hmm. level. I mean, again, I, I am not a, a sprite animator, and I know this team is small. So what I'm about to say may be ignorance and stupidity. We should also clarify, they do shit we'll never be able to do in our lifetimes. Yes, exactly. We but respect I, them. But I, I'm just going to say this as someone who doesn't really know, and is just talking out, out of his ass. So again, if I am incorrect... Like we tend to do. Yes, if, I, if I'm incorrect, please just call me an idiot on in the comments. Um, but how I, I'm going to assume all these people, are, you know, they're very talented with their sprite works and animations. Maybe it's just because they're, they were like down to the wire, but I don't like how long would... would these sprite animations take. Hmm. Again, again, I may be, I may be completely wrong, and it takes a lot longer than you would think. But it, to me, it just seems like, I, I, and again, I'm not at the end of the day. Things like zone transitions are a low priority of making the game, you know, good. like play good, like in the zone <laughs> yeah. and stuff. But just that's just something where I, I would assume if they maybe had like an, an extra week or so, then someone could have just cobbled, um, cobbled together some transitions. I feel like it's probably safe to bet those are a long time each. It's just making them as fluid as they are and detailed and like stuff Again, like that. That's why that's what I'm saying. I, yeah. I don't know. I, I just... I feel like maybe a week you could get one more in, just depending on like their workflow and stuff. But again, I, I, I wouldn't have minded but, yeah. even, even if all of them were just Eggman turns up with the fucking Phantom Ruby that... <laughs> just to have some level of... It's, it, it's just odd that they're there for some and not for all. Especially when you... Again, and this is going into like Sonic lore nerd shit Uh-oh. it's just weird when you transition from little planet to angel island it's yeah like, how the fuck do we get here like it doesn't like you know it's something on sonic 2 or sonic 1 you can just assume he, he's traversing through south or west island and that's just the order the zones progress into but when you're literally traveling from place to place as a sonic fan which all of these guys are um you know so maybe I, I, so i'm <laughs> so I, i'm sure on some level they, they might feel the same it's it's just odd that um, again you're traveling from these, uh, you know the, these very distinct uh, places that, that are far away from each other, canonly with no real explanation as to how we're getting there. Mm. We should. I also feel we need to clarify in case one of them happens to pawn this. That like, I doubt they will, but please do. Probably not. But I imagine like a lot of this stuff probably came up. Like I don't think it was like a for a lack of like. Oh yeah, I, detail. I, I, I'm sure every conversation, like everything we could possibly think of today. It probably crossed someone's mind at some point, oh, right? Yeah, also, but, I'm going to assume, especially... But I think it's also fair to say that there is a final product that has been released and it is okay to judge that critically. Well, also, also, yeah, well, two, two things. One, I'm going to just say people, people like, like, like Taxman and, and Stealth, 
certainly know this franchise f in and out far more than any of us three do. Yep. They know they they live them in. I think. Well, we, I don't know about that. <laughs> like we, we <laughs> Mr. Eight Games over here has something to say I've, about that. I've only played eight Sonic <laughs> games, but I think I, I know eight. a thing or two. <laughs> what does that matter? <laughs> yeah. um, during like, my tenure watching uh, Adventures of Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> yeah, because like if you talk about like Christian and Simon, like both of those guys have been doing this shit since like the nineties. Exactly. So, like so, twenty years. So what I'm gonna say is that you know. Um, Things like that. Also, Sonic wasn't even invented until the 2000s. <laughs> That's right. SA2, his debut. Also, um, because certain members of, of the team who um, I won't name have uh, you know publicly been very critical of, of uh, you know other really officially released Sega games, it would um, it would be hypocritical not to be you know us to be able to bestow the same level of critique that. Um, you know that those members have uh, given games anyway. Yeah, you know? for me, it's just, I love this so much that all those little things just like well, again, fucking like be flashing beacons, like hey, what's up with this? Talk about it. Well, again, you know the, the you know the, the the lack of level transitions is not. It's, uh, it's, I would say that as a nitpick, not even a real complaint. Yeah, like, it's I, just a shame because the ones that are there are so fun. Like I, that one from Press Garden to start a speedway. Even if eventually just culminates in the Sonic CD thing, I really like that one. Well, also, also the the um the act the act transition in Stardust Speedway. When yes. You, when you travel to the future, it's oh. so fucking good, oh. man. So mm -hmm. good. Future. I like. Future. Um. How about the uh the ma uh, the ma uh, the ma uh, the moo uh, special stage, guy? <laughs> you like those things? Yeah, I love it. Yeah, okay. All right. Next topic. I don't. I I really don't like. I, I don't get people ex uh, complaining about the controls. Oh, dude. I do. I mean, I it, it's a thing where I, I, lo I love the idea, and I, I, I get what they were going for. They're obviously going for a kind of Sonic R type uh, kind of um, special stage with those controls. Yeah, like, what if Sonic Team experimented with a 3D yes. Sonic? Because all these things always experimented my, with my, 3D stuff. My thing is, I, I just, I mean, the, <laughs> I think it, it's a thing where one, once you know what you're doing... You you know uh, you 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 know you can not know what you're doing, which is a terrible. It's kind of like sentence. It, it's because it's kind of like Sonic itself. Once you know what you're doing, it's awesome. But you kind of got a learning curve yeah, when you I first think, pick I, it up. I, I do think the the, the game itself <laughs> doesn't do a good job of explaining anything to you. Which, to be fair, neither did the Mega Drive games. So it's it's you know it's it's that it's fine in that regard. Mm -hmm. It's just um, you know it, it's I I would have just liked it just a, maybe a slight tweak to kind of make him a bit more responsive in the mm. way he moves. I was going to say, like, I know a couple people who had a lot of trouble with those. Like, <laughs> our friend David T. Worker, Sonic Retro Administrator, oh. was stuck on Special Stage 5 all day, and I called him that night, and he was going fucking crazy, because he's like, I just want to get Super Sonic. I'm freaking out. And he's like playing on the Switch, and it's dying, and David oh. freaks out over everything, so he's like in mega freakout mode. But I have definitely know some people who have trouble adjusting to it. For me, like... I got into it quick, and I fucking adore the special stages, but I completely understand why someone would have issue with them. But, god damn, I love the special stages. Yeah, I like, do I've, too. I've said it before. If they, like, designed 30 and spun it out into, like, a $5 digital, like, like add-on or release game. or something, Kirby, I'd be right Kirby there. Does that Kirby does that little, shit a lot. 3DS games, yeah. And I'd be, like, right there. I love them. And if you don't like them, you're wrong. Like, statistically, you're just incorrect. Your stupid butt and your butt stinks and, and you your like nose to kiss your nose probably, like, butt. exists, you know? Like, no, stop. You're wrong. Anyway, Full now that we've made factual statements about like, the Hedgehog. What, what, what did you think about um, Blue Sphere coming back, Chris? Uh, I've never been that crazy about it, but I will say it's weird to me how, as opposed to Chaos Emeralds, Slapping medallions and unlockables onto those made me care so much more about them. And it showed me like how feeble of a human being I am just to like get attached to like that <laughs> reward. But goddamn, that made me care about Blue Spheres. <laughs> my, my thing about Blue Spheres, and it's again, I think Blue Spheres is the biggest indication to me that Mania, in, in some regards, feels like a fan game because Sonic Team in the original classics, they never brought back. Like in a type of special stage, and the fact that they're bringing back the um, most that they did would be like, oh, here's a vaguely Sonic One esque thing for Sonic 3's bonus stage. Yes. But even then, it was something a new take on it. Um, yes, and the fact that also the fact that the like half of these stages are just the ones taken from um, 3 and K. TJ, would you like to say goodbye so it's not awkward when you're not speaking for the next however long this goes on? <laughs> no, I'm just very quiet. <laughs> Okay, I'm leaving because I have to work at 3 a.m., so bye. <laughs> what a nerd. It's not like we're recording this at 9.30 at night. 
Okay, is he almost gone? Yeah. Fuck that guy. He barely even talked. He likes Sonic Mania? What a loser. He likes Ocean Zone. I bet he's looking forward to Sonic Forces. (laughs) Nerd. What nerd would we? So now this podcast has achieved its true form. Um, What were we talking about? Um, Blue Sphere and how it's, I think... Right. And how even Sonic Team never, like, went back on ideas like that. And again, I think the fact that... um, the like half of the stages are just stolen from three and K, and I won't lie, I think those are the better stages. Hydrocity or Hydrocity being a good one because like no no, no no I mean I mean Blue Sphere the, the fact that the first oh right I thought you were going Sphere back to that just, yeah the ones yeah. taken from three and K and those I think are much better designed than the ones I see, I'm not familiar enough to like exactly know which ones were new and which ones weren't my, my, but there was definitely a lot I had a lot more issue with and did not enjoy as much. My to prob- support your point. My problem... <laughs> my, my problem with the... Um, with the... What you call it? With a lot of the new ones were... Like, they weren't hard. They were, they were just designed in a way to take a long time. And... and um, yeah, I noticed that with it's, some of them. It's, it's a thing where, like... Because, obviously, it, it's just a, a little bonus thing when you're trying to... Finish the game. I I I don't know, just something about that. I was just like, I, I get it. Like let's let's speed this up, sorry guys, because you know I want to do this, but I also want to actually play play the game. Type of yeah, thing. my first playthrough. Like I know I said I was motivated to do them, but on my first playthrough, I was not because of the, some of those ones that would take a long time or be intentionally tricky. Yeah. Yeah, I some of them I just did not enjoy. Like I can think of one where it's just running down straight narrow hallways and then there's one blue sphere, then you jump over a bouncing thing and there's yeah. another one, then you swoop a left and there's another long hallway and it slowly like goes into a center and it's like, I like the idea, but playing that is just not fun to me. Yeah. And much. for that one, like it wasn't even a timing thing for me. I had to go by audio to actually stop mistiming jumps after a point because ah. I had jump over blue spheres. It was very frustrating. I don't know. I feel like all the returning ones are probably the ones I enjoyed and all, some of the new yeah. ones I enjoyed and some of them are just what we've been talking about and just, I don't know. They just don't vibe with me. I would rather have seen them try to make a new bonus stage or at least yeah, maybe, you know, um, do what they did with the special stage and try and find some weird way to combine all the aspects of the prior bonus stages. Well, yeah, I mean, also just the fact that, you know, in, in 3 and K, we got three different bonus stages. That too. And, you know, in, in Mania, it's just one that we've seen before. And again, I... I, I Apparently, I, a lot of people don't even like, from what I'm seeing. <laughs> I've seen a lot of blowback against Blue Spheres. Which is weird, because, like, people wanted it for so long. But then I guess when it, you know, when there's there's so many of them, and it, it, it's just the free... I, I think... I Maybe think it went to casual fans, and they were like, we're not crazy about this. Whereas hardcore fans really wanted that back because it was an S3 and K. Well, I also think I also think that the fact that maybe the fact that half of them are just it's the same. I don't think yeah. people were expecting that. Yeah, and like it fits in with the game. Like, so some are new, some are old, that kind of thing. But mm. so, uh, what do you think of the um, the uh, the HBHs? You like them, boys and girls. The hardboard heavies, I think, are a great addition. It's um, it's one of the, the things. Again, this is a dumb thing to say about, about a, a Sonic game, but I feel like in terms of story, they just appear and then they they, they have no payoff mm-hmm. in terms of the overall plot of of uh, you know. Um, you you don't even technically like defeat them, right? You just kind of best them and they run away. Yeah, like you never, you never, um, and, until you... Kind of like the Deadly Six. Yeah, I mean, like you never destroy them. Whenever you fight them, like you hit them a bunch and then they literally just like, run away. And so you never destroy any of them. Yeah. Um, so it makes you question at the end, like where'd they go? I mean, there's also a thing where like, it's, it's a slight spoiler, but it's like, there's, there's, there's no plot in this game. When, when, you, when you get to the final... Like the final secret ending when you have all the care symbols, and it's like the leader of the hardboard heavies is like betraying Eggman. There's like no setup to that. It's like it just, I mean, he just he gets there and he's just they're fighting and you have to kind of just fight them both as they're kind of fighting amongst themselves. Yeah. It's like I mean, like it, it's a nice idea, but again, there's like no setup for that. It's just okay. Then I guess they're they're fighting yeah. now. Like, okay. If you refer to like the online material, it's like oh the hardboard heavies have gone rogue. But if you didn't know that, it's like I. Will, like applaud you for being able to figure that out. There is, there is nothing. I mean, like you can maybe Knuckles. Knuckles has a unique boss in Lava Reef Zone, um, where you actually you actually fight the the leader of the Hardboard Heavies, and, and there's an action that he does, which you can you can maybe interpret as him trying to gain more power over Eggman. But like again, it's it's not. 
three K does does kind of again. It's not masterful storytelling, but it does tell. You can generally tell what's going on. Yes, you you can tell what's going on, and like there are like plot twists, you know, and like you know the stuff from Knuckles and Eggman and in Phantasm. There's like there, there's nothing on that level, in in three in uh, in Mania, which again it's again it's not a big deal because again I don't. If you play a classic Sonic story, so if you play a classic Sonic game for story, you're kind of missing the entire point of a classic Sonic game. Yeah. But uh, it, it's, it's fine to care about the story, obviously. Look at us, but yeah, if but it's I mean, all you're coming for. Yeah, I mean, it just it just would have been nice if maybe again it's almost a thing like either either do it or don't bother at all type of thing. I would have loved. I know we've talked about the zone transitions. Obviously, they must have run out of time or something. Would have been great if during a zone transition halfway through the game. Eggman's about to do some shit and then the heavy king comes in and like disrupts his plan and Eggman's like ah fucking runs off and then it's like oh clearly they're not working together yeah. they're not getting along and like he's working against Eggman and also you so he has his own motives for whatever's going on and that would have been enough to I think go like oh okay but at the end yeah I saw some people online interpreting it as like you know are they just playing keep away from Sonic and not actually like fighting against each See, other. See, I thought I thought that to begin with, but then um, when I was doing the brain scratch thing, I thought that up when Johnny was like, "No, they're fighting you, idiot! What are you talking about?" I was yeah. like, "Okay, okay, Mister Johnny, what if what if you say so? How many subscribers do you got? Okay, I, I understand, sir. Oh, geez, he, he knows more than I. He's he's in the special thanks for this game. He knows what's going on. Just just the manual though, not the game. <laughs> Sorry, you gotta have more subscribers for that. <laughs> Get fucked. I think that Skyler made it then. He, yeah. he helped uh, introduce the game in a way. Yeah. Oh, He's boy. still stuck in episode two, baby. <laughs> that yeah. bastard. Hey, episode two is a better game than this. I'm joking. Man. Jesus. I'm joking, Though we will, I think we both agree on this, though. This may be, I'm not sure how people think about this. Episode two, Sky Chase knockoff, better than this game's. Well, about, about question, about question, Sky... This one's just... Sky Fortress Act 1 is like a thousand times better than Mirage. Mirage Saloon it feels tac- like it feels like that was like the last thing they added. They had to check that off the list, basically. Yeah, it's like we need... Again, which is a- another thing like, you know, try and try and... It, again, sometimes it mainly feels like it's just trying to hit checkpoints. Like, oh, fans will expect the Sky Chase once again. Free and K, they don't, they don't bother with a pointless Sky Check, Sky Chase, you know, um, rip-off, you know? And I think it bothers me that it had to be in Mirage Saloon in Act 1, because that's one of the new zones. And Act 2 is so good. And it's also the fact that Knuckles is Act 1, which is no no tornado shit, is one of that's my great. favorite zone acts in the entire game. Yeah. I wish it could have been, like, a lead in the Flying Battery Act 1 if it had to be there. Because yeah, I think that would have made more sense. Made fun, like, you know, you get, on, you get on the plane to catch up to Flying yeah. Battery. And I think it's like, also the fact that the start of Mirage Saloon, all three of them are on the plane... For some reason. Like, what, yeah, like, I would have liked a, n- a nice thing if they meet. And also, when you, at the end of Titanic Monarch, depending on who you play as, like, if you're a Knuckles or Sonic is in the ship that flies off, mm-hmm. when you leave Eggman to burn, apparently. Good. Fuck him. Fuck him. So it's like, um, okay. Yeah. Though I will say I do really like the imagery for Studiopolis into Flying Battery Zone's transition. They just run off screen, and then they run into the monitor and Break, jump on. Breaking news, Flying Battery Returns. Yeah. That's, not, that's cool. That was a good touch. This game's got a lot of nice little touches. For all the little touches we think it doesn't have, there are still a lot of great touches it does have. Okay, and again, like, like uh, the uh, July twenty second stream thing happening <laughs> in that very transition. <laughs> and again, it's like I, I know it sounds like we might be be more being critical. Like this is one of the the best games I've played in a while. It is some of the most fun I've had with a video game and this again, decade. I, I think I think one of the reasons why we may be a bit, a bit more critical over this, I say, say if this had just been Sonic Team and had made this, mm-hmm. we probably wouldn't be as, I we probably wouldn't be as, you know, oh, this thing is slightly off, this thing's slightly off, because it, it was made by the hardest of hardcore fans who like lived and breathed these games specifically for so long. I, I feel like we'd probably still be saying the same things, honestly. Because we say a lot of similar things about Generations. We do. I mean, I, 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 part of me thinks like we, we would be saying it, but... Um, it Maybe would, we wouldn't have the concession of we know it was a small team and stuff because it wouldn't have been. Yeah, and also I think it's just like I don't want to... Um, I, I don't want to, you know, say like it, 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 it was expected of, of this team to get it right, but it's almost like you... you on, on a certain level, you expect... You expect the, the hardcore fans to kind of know the kind of small references more than say the company would mm-hmm. in, in a certain extent true all, all I'm basically saying is that this game was made by a bunch of hacks and it's terrible 
Yeah, fuck them. This is just a fan game. This is a fucking... Is, Sonic Mega I still Mix, hate that sentiment. Sonic Mega Mix is better than this. Oh, God. Well, technically, it is, is a game made by fans. Hmm, true. Um, that does remind me, though. Incredibly anal, butthurt nitpick. At the July 22nd anniversary party, we had to record ourselves going, Sega! And they're like, just like Generations, you'll be in the game! And well, I went... Doesn't use it all? I went, me? And I haven't heard it anywhere. Uh, so and I know I'm, it's going to wind up and you're nowhere. it's going to wind up in forces oh. and I'm going to be in that game and not this one I know exactly how this is going to go <sighs> so I'll end up being in generations and you'll end up being in forces <laughs> story of my fucking life uh, get fuckers uh, what do you think about the bosses may as well like go in everything yeah, here yeah. I would say um, it's, I think the bosses are probably the weakest aspect of, of the game there are, mm, there are a handful of, of good ones I think the Metal Sonic one is actually one of my favorites. I think um, Mirage Saloon Act Two. Well, it is. It's that that one's a mixed bag. It's it's easy as fuck, but I love you know spoiler. I love seeing the hooligans. Like mm-hmm. I you know I, I love even though you're not technically fighting them. It's nice to yeah. see them again. Um, I think um, uh, oil, oil oil ocean Act Two. It's it you know it's one that everyone excites as being hard, but at least it presents a challenge. You know, so mm. many of these ones are just... Such as Oil Ocean Act 1's boss. Oil Ocean Act 1. The um, only difficulty. Studiopolis Act 2 as, as Sonic. I mean, so many of these bosses, they, I almost feel like they're designed more for Knuckles because because of his, his gimpy jump. When I played Studiopolis Act 2, I had a much more interesting time with Knuckles than Sonic because he can't just jump up and hit him most of the time. Exactly, which is why it's... And again, just so many, so many of the bosses, either they're either over pathetically, like, quickly... Or they, they drag out like Mirage Saloon Act 1 as Sonic. Like, I, that boss is so fucking tedious to play. Oh, with. right. The foreground, background, the, the, yes. character killer thing. Um, it's, you know, that's, that's just not, not that fun. If it tells you anything. I think the bosses in this game are strong. I forgot what that one was for a second. Oh, really? Like, uh, I, maybe not strong all from a fight perspective, but for, at least thematically. I think a lot of them are very memorable. So, some of them I, I like more on a thematic level. Like, say, the... Um, like uh, Studiopolis Act 2? Studiopolis Act 2 or like... I, I love the twist in Hydro City Act 1 when you're in Eggman's Eggmobile. Yeah. Like, that that, twi- that twist is good though. The fact that... Again, it's things like... Uh, in, in Hydro City, both of the bosses are just taken from 3 and K. Like, in Metallic Madness, for some reason, we fight a final zone. I think that, I think a handful of the bosses are either... Um, they're either too easy or they just... Reuse. I will say I love the new um, Flying Battery Act 2. With, Spider Boss? Sp- Spider Boss with Eggman's niece. Oh, is God, that, here we go. Which, which, again, that is a boss where I am ashamed to say it took me about a minute to realize how to attack it. But I think that that is a, that is a really good um, that is a really good boss. I don't feel bad. It took me half a minute to realize I could run on the bottom path where he is without getting hurt. <laughs> I was avoiding it. I'm like, this is fuck. What the fuck? <laughs> I was like really stressing out. I was like, oh, wait, it does not matter. Yeah, you know, boss, I, mean, I think the bosses are, are okay. I mean, you know, as, as we've said in the past, even you know, some bosses have never really been Sonic's strength. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, even even the three, even three and K, most of the Act One bosses are pathetically easy. Yeah. So in, in that in that regard, I guess they're just being true to the franchise. But um, again, the, there are a handful of um, of of bosses that uh, were really good. So I'm hoping if there's a mainly sequel, they'll kind of veer more towards bosses. I, I, again, I wish they just find a happy medium between. Bosses you can destroy in six seconds, and bosses that take you six minutes to sit through. Yeah, we didn't really go into it, but that oil act- ocean act one boss. The only difficulty there is if you don't know, most of those things will kill you once you go up. Because once that's gone, there is no challenge to that boss. I I will be honest with you. I have never I that boss. I've always defeated him so quickly. He's never even attacked me once. I don't even know where his attacks are. He swings a wrench around, and those things pop up and will crush death you with spikes if you're not in the middle too. And it's like, if you don't know that, you're probably going to get hurt. But if you do, like, there's no real challenge. Again, again, I have never, I've never even seen him, like, throw his, his wrench. That's how piss easy that, that <laughs> was. His. Yeah, and I like his design. I like him as, like, a Eggman robot. But it, it, He kind of reminds me of, of the Lumberjack from Mushroom Hill. Yeah. Yeah, actually. That's probably intentional. <laughs> fucking mooks can't make him just <laughs> a <laughs> fucking boss. Oh, no, he's got a wrench. Ooh. <laughs> Uh, music. T Lopes. Fucking uh, perfection. So so one of the best sound you know, one of the best soundtracks. Um I, I think and, and this is something I say with generations as well. 
the fact that it's not all original means that like I wouldn't re- I wouldn't rate it above like three and K. Mm. Um, because you know most of the tracks we're hearing for another time. However, I will say some of his remixes like T Lopes's Chemical Plant Act One, so fucking good. There's a moment mm-hmm. seriously that <laughs> when my son cries now, <laughs> Chemical Plant Act One will calm him down. That's how good that fucking track. Which is. Uh, Mr. Lopes appreciated hearing. <laughs> yes, I did. I did. Uh, Message T Lopes and advice on that, and he was uh, it was very appreciative to hear that. Yeah, we'll put it that way. <laughs> but um, yeah, even as someone who's like been a fan of his YouTube channel for years, like same, same. I was mm-hmm. very impressed with um the quality of the soundtrack. I was, I think, like I don't know what like voodoo he pulled, but it was just like way above the standards I was even expecting from him. It, I wouldn't, you know, obviously like the instrumentation isn't live and stuff like that, but. Uh, it does make the remixes where not much was done stand out like a sore thumb. Like, say, I know you appreciate the Hydro City takes, but to me, it mm-hmm. being so close to start a speedway, which while this track sounds similar, are actually very um, different if you listen to it back to back with the originals. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's weird to go from that to like Hydro City, it, where it's very similar. Which, again, I'm not sure if that was, was T Lopes' decision or maybe a, a Sonic Team man. And again, I, I, do, I do completely agree that the Hydro City ones are. They're almost they're almost covers versus like a like a, like almost a remake. like remasters. Yeah, but um, the the synth choices and the basic melody of Hydro City is so fucking good. Yeah, it's already pretty strong. That um, I'm fine of it. I my my probably weakest cover is and I know I I, I think I'm on the uh, minority on this by a mile, but for some reason, Flying Battery Act Two just doesn't doesn't do much for me. Act one, Act one's good. Mm. So I mean, think Act two is fine, but so I didn't know act, people act, were like crazy so about act it. Act two just doesn't doesn't um, flop about that high. But I mean, you know, Studiopolis, Mirage, Saloon, mm-hmm. uh, High Spec, Robo Gold might be my favorite. Is is now in my top five tracks in the in the, in the entire franchise. Damn, that dress so fucking good, man. Heck, so heck indeed. Um, heck in. Dang, I was going to mention the track specifically. Now I forgot. Danger um, on the dance floor. No, we were talking about like the, uh, damn, the Hydro City stuff, and I already forgot. Oh yeah, we were talking like, we don't know if it was T's decision. Like there is all the speculated like, J- you know, Michael Jackson stuff. Maybe mm-hmm. yeah, like what you were getting at Sega like, was just like, hey, like don't do too much to this stuff just in case. Which really was again from what we can gather, Jackson didn't do anything with that, which is why these levels were even included. Yeah. Although it is um. It, that whole thing's weird. Well, again, I think something I, I, I heard on one of the streams that if, if a CD release is made, it's likely a lot of the like, Sonic 1 and 2 tracks will be included. Which on one hand, it's like, then why, why even like. Why bother? Why bother? If it's know? not complete, you've already put out a vinyl that's not complete. Yeah. If the CD, you know, like official release should be comprehensive. You can get it for the vinyl for whatever space reasons or whatever, but. Because, yeah, I, for I, a digital I believe, soundtrack mm-hmm. release or CD, you know. I believe that the. The vinyl, because of, of limited space, it's just the original tracks. Which in one, I, I can like if, if yeah. you are if you are bound by um, by like space limitations, that kind of makes sense. But um, uh, you know, it's just like because again, the chemical plant stuff is, is it's too the, good. It's so fucking good, man. And I even like Green Hill Act Two a lot for being like a lost like Saturn Night Sea kind of track <laughs> at some point, <laughs> where it just goes fucking crazy with the uh, synth accordion they do, kind of like the first level from Nights. <laughs> um, the music does a lot of really cool stuff like that, where it references stuff from around that era of Sega in general, even. Well, again, I, th- I think one of the design documents was that they tried to treat it as like a lost Saturn game. So exactly. It's kind yeah. of going for like the Saturn style. So, like, the middle of Sonic Fight sound kind of has some hints of like the Riala boss theme with like the, the brass. Um, mm. We don't like the Sky Chase act, but it kind of sounds like Afterburner E instrumentation wise. It's just little stuff like that mm. that makes me love this a lot. The Sonic Three kind of goes or in one of the box tracks because why not? Like it's go, go, so good. Go, go. I'm just very happy with it, and I'm sad that a CD may not have everything. So I guess I just got to stick with the fan rips. Rip. But yeah, yeah, rip. It's, like, rip. it's like it's like if you, you know if you guys won't give it to us, you know what do you expect? You, you know, like there? why Nakamura's pockets just a little more? Like it's, it's going to keep happening if you keep using Green Hill. Well, so I mean, just uh, give it, them more money. It, it's like if you're gonna if you're gonna go to the process of of using these levels to begin with you would think like when some kind of contract was drawn you would just make that part of it to begin with maybe they couldn't negotiate it with them 
Well, you know, Maybe he knows that's like a good <laughs> income source. Oh no, he did it for uh, he did it for um, generations. You know? mm. I, I mean, wonder it, if that's the thing where. When I was a Japan project, maybe they Sega put a little more like effort into that, and so to speak. Oh, I mean, I think it's clear. Gen- Generations was clearly more of a of a, a high profile game for the franchise in general. Right. Um, yeah. So they would have like oh, no, it up for that. Yeah. It's easy money for him. He literally does nothing and then just gets money. Although it, signs off on it. I could, I could, I could see that more as a Sega being cheap versus he saying no. Yeah. It wouldn't be the first instance Sega has passed up on music licensing. And it won't be the last. last. It won't be the last. Absolutely not. I'm amazed they even got the Offspring songs for that crazy taxi clicker app they put out a few months ago. (laughs) Granted, they only got two, but it's better than what the HD port got. It's it's better than nothing, would you say, Chris? Uh, (laughs) I would have, you know, I would have fucking loved it if the Mighty Number Nine Twitter account, after all the shit with the um the DRM for Sonic Mania. Just tweeted at the Sonic account saying it's better than nothing with a picture of Beck looking sarcastic. Like fucking Sonic did to them. I'd love to see the Mighty Number no. 9 account go fucking rogue and just be an asshole to every game on Twitter. <laughs> It'd make themselves look like douchebags, but they've done enough of that already, so why not? Well, I mean, Sonic does it now. So Sonic like, does it. Like it. Yeah, not? yeah, true. Um, hmm. Here's something I, that I think about visually. The new stages in this game all look pretty good. Yeah. Like, a way above the other levels, and I can't help but wish... Like, if you look at every level side-by-side side with the original, there's a noticeable improvement, right? Yeah. But then you get to something like Studiopolis, where it just looks so good. I can't help but wish maybe they needed more uh, manpower, or woman power, you know. But just to, like, really beef up all the pixel art in this game. I, I think I read... I think... I think well, two things about that. One, I think... Um, Titanic Monarch Act 1 looks like it's from a different game in terms of it, its design like how the, the backgrounds are animated like the flag shit it look, it, to me it feels like it's from an like, entirely different game and it looks amazing mm-hmm. um, I, I, yeah I can see that um, I, think, I think I read somewhere and I'm not sure if Taxman was just being coy but I remember those, it was either on like a forum post or on Twitter where he either he was either joking or he was being serious where I think he said something like the fact that the reason why Mania is spray animations was just because it's easier and cheaper. Where maybe if they would have had more, more time and more budget, they would have gone for a different look. Like, I'm not sure if he was just being coy with his, mm. with his response to that. But, you know, I, I, also, I can see that. I also, you know, obviously, if you're going to reuse two old levels, you kind of can't make him look too different. Sort of Speedway Act 1. I mean, Sonic Speed React 1 is all in the past, isn't it? I, mean, I, I haven't played CD in a while, but how, how different did, did the past look compared uh, to how it's portrayed? Well, they there? made Act 1 more of a ruins level, so they took a lot of liberties with it. Mm-hmm. But, I don't know, like, Act 2 to me is, like, the beefy upgrade I wanted from, like, all the levels, where there's, like, all kinds of crazy new things. Like, there's foreground, like, searchlights and stuff like that. I don't know, Act 2 just looks like sensory overload to me, and it's kind of hoping for more <laughs> of that in the game. I don't know. It's good. Again, game looks awesome. So I'm not saying very, it looks bad very, or anything. Very good looking, uh, you know. It, it, you know, it's a it's a sprite game, but again, this is what I would I would put this up with Mega Man Eight in terms of my favorite looking sprite games. Because oh. the you know Mega Man Eight is a very see what you want about you know some people don't like Mega Man Eight visually. I think that game it's fluid as shit. The uh, sprite animation is fantastic. Check it out our LP of Mega Man Eight. Look, look, look. Oh yeah, we used to make video game LPs. Yeah. But then we realized... Then we realized podcasting is way easier because you don't have to do anything. Please sign up to our Patreon so we can plug a lot of Simpsons episodes. You mean the pup named Scooby-Doo, right? Yeah, of course, of course. Talking pups. Talking pups. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> fuck. Um, that's kind of... I mean, like, unless you want to get like real into the weeds, that's kind of mainly the most major parts of Mania, right? Yeah, I mean, I, 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 you know, I'm going to say this now, and I'm sure most people won't be shocked. I think we'll save some more for the inevitable FT show LP of Mania. In 2019, did they yeah, along the Sony Sonic movie? <laughs> like, we don't want to repeat ourselves too much, but yeah, so I think at this point there's nothing else to talk about except... Thank God that the ending ties in the Sonic Forces, apparently. <sighs> Y'all like that, um... That uh, that Sonic Forces, right? <laughs> uh, 
So there's been uh, a lot more info about that game since we last convened. Did we even and get? Did we even get like was was the OC revealed? Before? Nope. Okay, damn. That was something we were like, oh man, this will be fun to talk about on the podcast, and we never did. We never did. Um, man, that game exists. Um, I you know I again I I've, I've gone on record several times. I'm I'm more of a modern fan. I think. Careful, Sonic Defense Forces Defense Squad is listening, <laughs> and they will comment your every comment. Um, I think you know I. If you were to add them up, you could probably say that modern has more, on a, on a numbers game, has more bad games than classic. But oh, like, easily. Like, we're talking, like, seven years versus the although, rest. Although, to be fair, most of the games in the Game Gear are fucking terrible. So, I think the, the Game Gear stuff helps out. <laughs> helps out the bad classic games. But, helps balance um, it out. Yeah, but um, it's just, like, modern things like, things like Adventure, things like Generations, Colors. These, these games, I just, I have... I have more enjoyment with them than the classics. So, you know, modern is in my guy and just... It surprised me when you said that because I had you pegged the other way around. No, because again, I, I, I grew up with the classics, you know, like I I got, um, I got I remember getting three and Knuckles when they, when they came out. So mm. I've, I've been with this franchise almost since the beginning. Um, and it's just, Forces just looks, like I, I don't know who they're trying to please. It's like they're trying to please everyone. fucking everyone. Um, and it, and no. I think Mania, as a juxtaposition, shows how great it is when you focus in on one specific target and say, all right, we're just going to build it for these people and tailor it. Like, hey, classic fans, you're set. Mm. Like, things you couldn't even imagine being in a new 2D Sonic game here. Like, there's a fucking, like, mean bean machine boss, you know? Which, so yeah. Which, I, that's its own thing we have opinions on, but we'll probably save those for DLP, just because mm. going back now would be awkward. Yeah, like, I'm more of a 3D guy. I, it's so tough watching every new thing with forces because, like, in every way, that should be my fucking game. Mm-hmm. I love, I love the boost gameplay. Yeah. I'm okay with Generations Classic Sonic Two. Um, the the hero mm-hmm. stuff, you know, eh, take it or leave it. You know, that's not that offensive to me. My thing about my thing about the thing that to me it seems like it's it's poor management on on Sega's behalf. It's like if 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 Sonic Mania wasn't a thing in general. Um, classic Sonic coming back and reusing things like Green Hill again wouldn't be to me, wouldn't be as as lazy and again I don't I, I honestly God, don't mean I don't mean the word offensive I'm trying to think of like a different word for it. not offensive but like it's just just this fucking lazy as you know we need classic Sonic again in the in the year again I've said it before three three games this year Mania Forces and Runner's Adventure will have Green Hill in it. All right, Runner's Adventure. I even brought that up before we started, and I forgot to mention it. But yeah, like imagine that classic Sonic in the Forces CG trailer last year. If there was no Mania announcement at near the start of the show, it would have been like, oh, wait, what? And at that point, it's just like, oh, he's back. Mm-hmm. And also, there was the Sonic Dash thing where he's in there now. Yeah. Like, why is there so much classic Sonic focus? Well, wait, I, I, I'll be perfectly honest with you. Even if Mania wasn't a thing, I, I still would have been like, again. Yeah, it wouldn't, wouldn't have been like. Classic, but it, it, it's just like they essentially released, uh, showcased two games with classic Sonic, and I'm like, why? Yeah. Especially, especially after Generations, Izuka was like one time thing, one time thing only. Even going into Generations, I think I remember him saying, like, yeah, classic Sonic, you know, like, Sonic 4 is just modern Sonic, stuff like that. Like, he wouldn't even entertain the notion. But you just can't tell. Like, he just says things, like, that match that exact moment. He's Game Gear Games, LOL. He's a very interesting PR guy. Classic like, Sonic, LOL. Or, I should say, he's not a PR guy. He gives very interesting PR. Yeah. But, like, what I was getting at, like, you know, Sonic Forces seems to take itself more seriously in terms of plot than say like a lost world just because it's trying to build a world I don't know, ironically mm. um it's trying to build like a i don't want to say keep using the word serious situation and stuff but you get what i'm saying like yeah. it's setting more of a stage i guess is what i'm trying to get at and that should be my shit because i love sa1 i love unleashed like i like you know whether they're good or bad i like the world building in those games and like this game should you know potentially have the potential for that and just every time I watch a character run through those fucking horizontal ass stages line, yeah. with like barely any thought or deviation, and like any time you do, it's like three congruent floating horizontal platforms that lead to a red wing, a red wing, and then take you back to the main path of a. It just doesn't look fun. But my thing is that something that everyone you know likes to point out is you know oh it's just you know it's just the one level, but now they've revealed something like four or five levels. 
and they all look this bad. Yeah. If, and now the thing's like, oh, they're just early levels. It's like, great, but this is a product that they're trying to sell to me. Like, make me interested. Yeah, and also just the fact that the, the um, level they recently showed off with the, with tag team. the tag team, that is the best design level, but that still looks boring as fuck. It reminds me of uh, Dragon Road Day, where there's those spinning things near the end. That's the most interesting thing we've seen from Forces Level Design so far. And it's... <laughs> Yes, it's very, it's the, circular platforms that move. The the mildest of, of 3D of honest to god 3D platforming, uh, you know, certain people want to just get on their knees and praise, and it's just like you know, it was just blowing me away. I mean, again, you know, I don't, you know, if, if forces looks good to you, that's great, you know. Like if, if you honestly, I'm jealous. If you yeah, it's like if you honestly, if if you think you know, as as it stands now, I, I'm not trying to be like my opinion's better than yours. I just honestly, nothing I've seen of forces um, makes me. Look, makes me remotely interested has impressed me yeah, or makes me feel interested in the slightest so yeah. and like you know, I don't like this <laughs> I don't like this shit on forces because I want to like it yeah you know, we're not here to like put it down or put down people who like it it's just god damn it's so close to being what I want but every time I watch them play it it just looks so boring yeah it's boring. and like there's the a music. lot of people out there defending it the music yeah. You know, there's a lot of people music, out there. It's very subjective, but like nothing, I nothing that they have revealed. You didn't like the Metal Sonic one. I mean, I for I'll give it points for them doing the, the um, US version over Japan again. I'll give it points for that. But it was Tokoi back. Slightly too dubstepy for me. Like it, was, <laughs> it was too like. I knew that'd be how you thought about it, but I can it, see that. It was, it's like you know, I don't, I don't hate dubstep, but that was just like. It just felt like those like seven thousand the amount of jewels going off during that track. It's like okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like I, some people are saying like, oh, they're showing off the early levels because they're taking the plot more seriously this time, and they don't want to spoil the ending. And there's all this mystery with Infinite and the returning villains, I would, which I would, we also haven't talked about here. But I will argue them. How do they know? Like in terms of the plot, how do how do how do they know that? How do they know it's early? Yeah, I mean like how yeah. Do, there's that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. There's also. Hey, there's a point where you need to show that your game is actually interesting. <laughs> like if they were just like, hey, here's like a stage from the middle of the game, and it looked like a stage that could compete against you know something average from Generations or Unleashed, I'd start to go, okay, now we're getting somewhere. But I have this like horrible feeling that like you'll get ten stages in the forces, and it'll still be that, but maybe slightly more complex than what they've shown. Yeah, and I, I was on the thing that it's running. It's running on the PS4 on their talented Hedgehog Engine Two, <laughs> which is a really funny name to me for some reason. But um, well, Hed- sorry, Hedgehog Engine Two Yeah, but nothing they've revealed looks that uh, great. It doesn't. It's nothing to me still with tops. Definitely, sorry, nothing they've shown to me it has wowed me on a sense that scene unleashed for the first time. It's nice to see more detail and sixty frames per second. Yeah, After I mean, Lost World, but I, also it's been four years. I think the most impressive thing, and this is a very minor thing, I like the fact, and this is just because Mario Kart 8 did it so well, in the first level they showed off, like when the, um, that city is being destroyed by the giant robots, there's like puddles on the floor. Oh yeah. <laughs> and just the very small detail, I was like, oh, that, you know, looks, that looks kind of cool. One of the best tells for how good your graphics are in this new age is how good is your pavement look when it's wet or when there's a puddle. So. Oh really? <laughs> In my opinion, at least, like I look at racing games at nighttime in the dark. I'm like, God, that looks awesome. But, uh, what were we even talking about? I'm so tired. Um, Our forces. I mean, again, you know. Yeah, I, we had like a specific subject. It's like I don't know. I I want to like it. Um, nothing would make me happier than to be proven wrong, wrong. and and, and they, have I, to like eat your own hat and be like, okay, this game is actually fucking cool. I will nothing. You know, I will f- gladly. You know, say I was wrong. Mania, it, no, Mania. A force is, <laughs> is 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 a lot of fun. And again, say because you know, I, I I was thinking in terms of the levels. I was thinking of, of some something like say SA one. So say if, if forces had the levels of, of SA one, we would have seen like half of them by now. But if if this goes for something more of say gives us the levels of something like say a, colors, a colors or like a lost world, then we've only seen like like a fraction of them. So like, I, the level design does seem very colors in Lost World, so I kind of wonder if they're going for shorter, more simpler acts. Well, I mean, the, the um, Pyramid Tag Team is like, just like, I think it's just barely over two minutes. I feel like most of the stages have been. Yeah, I mean, I think, I, I've said it before, but that, that um, green sand here, I know we sometimes people joke about Sonic being just hold right to win. That level literally was hold right to win. I think he jumped <laughs> like twice. And everyone jokes about Boost Sonic being hold forward to win, but... 
that one stage they've shown for modern. Mm. It's just walk forward and occasionally hold and attack enemy standing right in front of you. Then when it's two D, you hold right. Yeah. I don't know. Like I, it's. I mean, it's, it's just it's weird how like. I wonder. I wonder if if any of the people working on the forces have checked out Mania. If you could just you could take the the most like the most basic level from from Mania, and it just has so much more Close shit going on. Than I know Otani's in, played it. Sir? I know uh, Tomoyo Otani's played Mania. Well, yeah, but I mean, for what he, that's worth. Yeah, well, I mean, he, he, he just, he just yeah. working on the music. <laughs> I, I know he made it a big point. He was very happy when he got all seven chaos symbols. He was like, that's adorable. He was like, I have all chaos so seven emeralds. Oh my god. <laughs> Apparently, uh, that final boss music for Mania has a little uh, fist bump. Yeah, I've never what? really I, heard it, but no. everyone seems to think so. I mean, it, it, it probably is, but yeah, I, I've listened because, you know, I, you know, I have the, uh, the rip, please don't arrest me, but uh, <laughs> I've, I've never, I don't hear really fist bump in it. Yeah, I, I try to hear it, and it's like, I guess I hear it, but like, it's no. it's a cool connection considering what's going on, if so, but I just can't yeah, place I mean, it. Although I'm probably, because I, I'm one of those people who, in the um, in the City Escape, re- the modern City Escape remix, everyone says that they can hear um, SA2, it, it doesn't matter, in the um, guitar style. I've never been able to hear that. So it, I had that issue, then I realized it's not the chorus, it's the opening duh, the opening guitar thing from the SA2 version. It's not the chorus. Oh, okay. Okay, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that, that threw me off for a long time, because I read I bet the exact same thing you did, where I go, oh man, they put the chorus in. Like, like, that that sound doesn't sound anything like it. What are you people fucking stupid? <laughs> yeah, then I listened to them back to back, and I was like, oh, the guitar, got it, okay. <laughs> Um, so, you know, things, things like that. But again, it, nothing will make me happier than the, you know, because I don't want to... Yeah, I mean, Chaos is back. That's from my first Sonic game. Like, I should be fucking, like, mind-blown. Like, what the fuck? Chaos is my favorite monster of the week, without question. Mm. Um, and, it's, you know, again, no one... I, I don't care who you are. Nobody wants to spend $40 on a game that they think they're going to hate. And a know? Sonic fan at this point wants a bad Sonic game. <laughs> We've had enough. <laughs> But I mean, it's like it's just so close yet so far for me every time they show that game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it just gets more and more sad to think about, and like now it's tied to Mania pretty indisputably or ir- whatever well, the word I, is. I, I think it's, it's like ninety, it's like ninety-five percent assured that because of how that sound effect, because the, the sound effect, and also you could argue the uh, the true ending if you you know if you defeat the real final boss. What they show you... Uh, it's a specific pose that's in every YouTube thumbnail at this yeah, point. <laughs> a, a, a specific pose, and just the fact that, you know, Sonic seems to be going somewhere. <laughs> it's To uh, hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is it's, it's going to another modern game. Um, you know. You know, we'll, 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 have to, we'll have to wait and see, but um, I'm not... I'm not exactly holding. It. I, you know, I'm a, I'm a mindless, I'm a mindless sheep fanboy, so I'm gonna get it day one. Yep. But I'm not, um, I'm not holding my breath like I was for Mania. Yeah, I'm not holding my breath like I was for Unleashed or Colors or Generations. Oh, Generations, yeah. Even Lost World, I got excited for after even, I played it at Boom. Even even Rise of Lyric, I was looking. For, I was the one guy who was like, "This game looks fun." You and Tails Channel. Well, I, I was, he was like, "It's like Sonic Adventure, man." Because someone on the staff said that, I think. All right, okay. Um, well, see, I, was, I was really looking forward to Boom and to, like, the week. Because you were, you were at my house when, like, the first footage was leaked. When a guy was going through and it. It's really I, awful. And you and I was like, oh. We didn't think it'd go like this. Oh. <laughs> yes. Oh, fuck. God, I remember, like, Lost World was out at that point, right? For, like, about a year. And I think at that point, there was still a momentum to Sonic, and maybe it had faltered a little with Lost World, yeah, well, again, but we thought, there's no way. I mean, Lost, Lost World, again, I still, Lost World isn't a bad game, it's just boring as fuck. Yeah, like it's, but it, like it's, after Unleashed Colors and Generations, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, it's the definite, like, if yeah. you like Lost World, great, but for us, it's obviously not. But, you know, after that, you're like, they're not going to, like, do anything crazy to hurt the Sonic they're not, like They're they, going to ruin this franchise. Like, like, they, they can't. There's yeah. no way. It's like, yeah, we didn't like it, but it's not, like, a bad game. But then <laughs> Rise of Lyric came out, and you're like, oh! oh God. Yeah, this franchise can still do bad. Okay. <laughs> Which I... I, I it may I do that again. I still like Rise of Lyric. Uh-oh. Well, I, know, like, I, I, I think... Um, you enjoy it. I, I, I don't think it's as bad as everyone says it is. I, I honestly don't think it's 06 bad. I think that is hyperbole of the highest order. See, I would say 06 is better. 
Want to um, argue about it? I would say 06 oh. is oh, oh, 06 is more fun to play. Oh yeah. And without without question, if I was to put a gun to my head, I would oh clearly choose to play 06 over over. Uh, okay, so I don't have to get smoothies in here to do another most impression. Wow. Wow. We need to get David to just be a terrible moderator. If people thought I people thought I cheated last year, Jesus Christ. <laughs> David was a bad moderator this year. My man. Exactly how he should have done. Um, when it comes to forces, would it just take showing off some good levels and the social media team being like, hey, like, here's an idea of what you'll start getting into, like a third in the game, and it starts to get more interesting and complex from here? Is it just the level design you need to get you it back is, on board? It is literally, I mean, th- things like music, the OC character, the fact that the script looks like it's bad fan fiction... Well, you didn't like the part where the new dude's faster than Sonic? Oh my god, that's so embarrassing. That's like a great thing, right? That's and, never been done and before. the fact that, that, that the infinite reveal trailer looks like a bad a- AMV, it's like, it's, it's honest to god embarrassing. That I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure who put together that infinite trailer, but like, like... Fucking who was think? What are you, fucking like, 12, like 19, like 2002? Is that the worst fucking thing ever? I mean, if you got a game that has an OC creator... Go all the way with it. I have, I respect that trailer. The, the, I don't. I think it's terrible. I think it's the, an awful trailer, but I respect the idea of what I, they're going I for. Think the, the fact that the, the first half is in black and white is embarrassing. <laughs> Maybe that's how the game actually looks in that part. Oh god, um, the film noir. You know, it's, and also small small thing. And I've, I've I've brought this up a few times with with different things, but like again, to, to go back to go back to Rise of Lyric, um, best animated cutscenes. Oh yeah. That for some reason, like look look at the animation in in the in that you know um his infinite trailer, and um the animation's really bad. That unleashed to lost world like choreographing they're doing just doesn't cut it for like action scenes. At least no, not the way they're doing looks, it there. It looks really really like. There's no sense of like movement with Infinite and Sonic when it's supposed to be illustrating that he's faster than Sonic. Like oh he stepped to the side, yeah. and Sonic like froze in place, but. Did Infinite freeze him? Did Sonic stop? Like, what is going on in this cutscene? Yeah, but like, please, it's it's just badly conveyed. And like, I'm guessing some of it's bad because they cut around the cutscene some just for the trailer effects. But it is just so unclear what is going on for most of that trailer. And then there's like skewed camera perspectives, and you're just like, why? Yeah, and, and just also just the fact that the facial animation just looks bad. It just looks dumb and not dumb. It, it looks. Also, why are four the most quote menacing Sonic villains just standing there watching instead of helping him beat him up. Yes. It, again, it, it, it's fa- it's Sonic fan fiction in the game. Yeah. Um, which is why I'm not surprised why the SA3 fan page seems to be loving this game. It seems like it has so many elements of what could at least be an interesting game and I'm hoping it gets there but it just you know what? it's not this, showing me it's going to do that so this far. This game it, it, in terms of like the uh, the tone um, the villain the, the music it's almost supposed like this is the game that should have followed up Shadow, not 06, you know? You know what? Yeah. It almost feels like this game is being released like a... Sonic like, Adventure like, 3? Like a decade too late. Like Izuka just pulled it out of like cryostasis. It's like, well, we can pretty this one up, I guess. <laughs> I don't know. Fuck it. Yeah. Would not, would not surprise me. It's hard to talk about forces any more than this because it's like I just keep going back to the level design. If they show some fun levels, I'll be tentatively excited. But until then, I'll enjoy the J-pop, I guess. Because I'm one of the, like, three people who finds that stupidly catchy, even though it's awful. They come the enemy, fuck them up. I, would, I could do without that part, but... They come the enemy, kill their kids. Jesus, <laughs> stop. <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> fuck. Um, Sonic the Hedgehog. Is that all? Yeah, we good? I think so. TJ? <laughs> okay. Thanks. Sonic Runners Adventure. Sega, please put that out on Apple already so I can have an opinion on that. Yeah. Um, until then, next time we do a podcast, Forces will probably be three years old. So see you then. <laughs>